Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a chance corrected effect size for Cochrane's Q-Test with a little bit of help of SPSS and Excel. Um, unfortunately SPSS doesn't have any built-in method that I'm aware of to do this directly so we're gonna uh, have uh, SPSS do some calculations and then we'll use a basic calculator or in my case I'm actually going to be using Excel a little bit to get everything in. Now what we need here is the number of variables so in my case that's going to be four and I'm going to be having 150 cases. Now the first thing we need is the sum of the products of from the frequency table and what I mean with that is something we need to do in SPSS. Go for analyze and then go for the, the tables and then go for the custom tables. You might get a message about uh, measurement levels, I think it was. Select the variables of interest and move them to the rows. And you might also want to put the row labels in columns. Now click on summary statistics. Uh, leave everything here as is. And click on categories and totals. And now say add a category because we also want to multiply them. So let's call that a product. And I want to multiply the not visited result times the visited result. Click on continue and click on apply. Um, actually, we might want to put it nicely at the bottom. Uh, apply and then click on OK. Now we have here four numbers and those numbers we need to add up and enter into uh, Excel. So let me move this a little bit to the side. Let's get Excel in there. And just switching, it's going to be 5,500. Not sure if I can actually copy all of them in one go. Copy and then hopefully perhaps just paste. Yes. Uh, plus and plus and plus and that gives me uh, oh, I should of course put an equal in front of that so there we go so I have 21,044 that's one a number done then I can actually calculate this part of this whole formula because this 21,000 is all of these sums together and then I uh, can actually do here the negative indicates a division so I can do uh, one over then open the parentheses then there's k k is actually the number of variables that i have multiplied by the combin combinations of the 150 semicolon 2. the combin bit is the part here that's between the two parentheses uh, without the divisor that actually indicates combinations then we need to multiply that with the result we just had and that gives us our first delta then we need that pi so we're going back to in this case spss and what we need to do is we need to count how many times their success here now i've coded this as zero for failure and one for yes and that's really convenient because then i could simply use transform compute variable and say, well, my um, my proportion of success for each person would be, and then open up parentheses, this one, plus their score on this one, plus their score on this one, plus their score on this one, and then simply divide that by four. Or I could even use the mean option, because it will then calculate the average, and that will, uh, or the sum, I think, yeah. Um, and then we'll also uh, do that or the mean because it will then divide by 4 the sum yeah but I'm not going to do that now because perhaps you haven't done the zero one. one in that case you can use transform and then there's an option count values within cases and let's call this one then not PI but let's reset the whole thing let's call them a number of successes and suk and then it's based on all these four define values and it's going to be counting my ones add continue and okay so now what it's done is it 
added them up so here this person only had one this person had a success of three and now I can actually say divide simply this one by four so transform compute variable and I'm going to be calling this pi and that's going to be simply my number of successes divided by the number of cases uh, variables I had that was four and I click on OK and that should be all in the data file there we have so one out of four is indeed 0.25 there's another one now that we need this pi multiplied by one minus pi so i can do and i uh, transform sorry and compute variable and i can say pi times one minus pi not sure if it's liking that but we'll see and then we can say well that's going to be this one and then multiplied by between brackets uh, 1 minus this one click on OK yeah it doesn't like the so let's just call this PI2 then and say OK and now it has the other one up here we need the sum of these two so I can simply go for analyze descriptive statistics frequencies select the last two the ones I just created and under statistics make sure you select where is it here at central tendency the sum continue and I don't need to see a frequency table so okay and I should nicely get 61 and 26 so if I now go back to my little Excel spreadsheet so the sum of the PI column was 61 and the other one 61 the other one was 26 just to make sure yeah that's all we needed then from SPSS now we can actually fill out the rest of this scary looking formula um, the mu is now the 2 over and then open a set of parentheses uh, the B is the 150 up here times another set of parentheses 150 minus 1 close all the parentheses and then multiply that with another set of parentheses the sum of pi that was this one times parentheses again then we need b minus that pi and then we close these parentheses and one other minus and that was the 26 and then we close all of this up then last but not least what we need to do equals 1 minus and then the delta that we have here divided by the mu and we should have our end result as 0.02628 so that's the best I can do uh, using SPSS uh, I hope in the future they actually put something in that does all of this automatically if I made a mistake somewhere let me know in the comments um, if you like this video please subscribe because that really helps out and thank you for watching